Hey everybody, welcome back to the Iron and Oak Sawmill. If this is your first time here, I'm Chuck. Deb's behind the camera, and I'm sure you get to see her later on in the video. And we are Iron and Oak Sawmill. Um, if, you, if you like what you see here, go ahead and hit that like button. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and definitely appreciate it. To all the folks coming back every week, thank you very much. This is what, two weeks after Bunyan? And we are back on the mill, finally. We spent uh, some time over in the wood yard splitting. And I'm see, sure you've seen that video already and uh, got to try out the new conveyor. But on the mill today, black walnut, some real nice black walnut. Uh, let's go take a look at it, see what we got. All right, the length on this, 10 and a half feet. And getting around these felling notches and maybe a little past a little butt swell. Wow, 36 inches, guys. This is a really nice black walnut. Um, let's take a look down the... Uh, down the trunk here now we do have a little bit of uh stress crack here only goes in about six inches i mean we could take a cut off of this and clean it up but we're going to lose too much lumber out of that going down through here this is the butt log off the tree very clear our first sign of an issue is here we were thinking about cutting that off but we said no there's still a lot of good lumber on the far side of the log so we decided to leave that on we'll keep it at ten and a half feet and uh yeah it's going to be nice this is the one we're going to feature in today's video we do have two more we'll probably be doing videos on those as well i would say we've this one's 30 and probably 24. if you look back in our videos we did a huge black walnut haul this is from those you can see them loading up black walnuts with an excavator on our trailer these are those logs we're finally getting a chance to get them milled up lt35 is ready to go all right one of the other questions we get with what kind of blades we run and we are 99.9% .9 of the time running double hard seven degree turbo 739 blades from wood miser it's a 158 inch length um, 0 0.045 thickness one and a quarter inch width and they are uh, they have served us very well and check these guys out industrial cutting tools is where we're getting our blades and they're definitely hooking us up. They kept us going through uh, when we had, there was a lot of blade shortages out there. People couldn't find blades. They kept us going, kept the mill up and running. We definitely appreciate the guys down there. Again, it's Industrial Cutting Tools. Joe Main, we will put your information in this, uh, in this video description. And uh, if you're looking for blades, check them out. Guys, we've been using this hook for years and we have never ever really talked about it. This is the Logrite Mega Hook. As you can see, I'm about six foot tall. This is six and a half foot tall, 78 inches of leverage. And it makes a huge difference when you've got to move logs onto the mill. We go off site, we can't take the tractor. We want our, uh, we want to be able to move logs. And if they're big, this is the one we, de we depend on. We also have a, a 60 inch we use. Yeah, bring that over here, Tom. This is what they call the mega hook. 78 inches is the biggest they make. And we use all canned hook style. The difference with the can hook and PVs. If you're, if you're unfamiliar, canned hooks have this end. Let me bring that a little closer. Let me lay this down for one. Have this style end on it, right here. That's called a canned hook. If you see the ones with the point, that's a PV. That's more for getting in between logs and separating them. Uh, and if you want to, stick it in the ground so it stands by itself. But we prefer this type. This is our standard series, um, 60 inch can hook. And this serves us very well on the mill for our basically normal size logs <laughs> but when we get these big bohemus like this it's definitely the mega hook we also have another one that it's, we just purchased it and we don't have it out here right now it's a 42 inch and i'm kind of thinking i should have gone a little shorter but the 42 inch we're going to keep on the operator side of the mill that's for doing those really uh sm the, the smaller cants the small stuff that i and usually it's the short logs guys if you ever worked with the mill if you, if you ever worked on a mill and you've got those short logs, 48 inch, maybe a 60 inch log, you get them smaller ones, 36 inch, something like that. They're a real pain to deal with with the, uh, the log turner. That's that uh, little can hook on the operator side of the mill. You pick it up, boom, 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 and you're good to go. So, but the log rate hooks, can't go wrong with these guys. Okay, guys, I think when we did the calculations on this log, it was close to 6,000, 5, 6,000 pounds for this log. I don't know. We'll, we'll check the weight on this, the, the calculated weight on this, and uh, we'll put it in the description, all right? Ready? 
Let's get ready to drop it in behind it. Just drop it right there, dude. There you go. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Yes. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Ready? Thank you. Go. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. We don't have to do it this way. We could have pushed this with the tractor, but we wanted to demonstrate how well this hook works uh, for situations when you do need it. So go ahead, Deb, if you want to hit the loading arms. Let's get this thing up on the mill and uh, start making some slices. I don't know if you could hear that guys, that the mill is working to get this thing up there. So you know this is heavy. And again, here we go. You wanna go up on the stop or the clamp please? A little bit more. There you go. I don't, I mean, maybe I'll pull some footage or if you look back in our other videos of when we used this thing to move some monster red oak logs. You remember that one out in the driveway? That thing was a beast. We were rolling that over nubs and everything else. We couldn't get them. We couldn't get it any better than it was. And Deb and I on a couple of the can hooks, it was some work. <laughs> amazed we actually moved it it actually when it hit the mill it knocked the mill off the blocks but uh just shows the power of having a good lever like that All right, guys well we worked late into the night last night unfortunately um, this particular log being a butt log had quite a bit of metal in it unfortunately 
walnut yard walnut yard trees what can you say but this so far of everything we've cut off was the only one that uh, it's got a decent amount of, of uh, heartwood in it we'll be trimming the sapwood off and the other stuff all had metal in it so there was either holes dug in it or too much sapwood or both all right there's still something on this side of the log that's an old metal stain there uh, when we go to when we go ahead and cut a board off this side that'll be fine but it's closer to this edge of the log there is still some metal according to the metal detector we only hit one piece of metal with the blade and we kept using it until we got everything straightened out we didn't want to go tr just trash one blade after another so the knot that was in here um not much of an issue we can do is just skip this side all together and if we do take some off of this side we can trim boards off of that end cut it off about eight foot and we should be good to go um what else we got going on this is where we were last night at the end of the video there was two concrete anchor screws in here believe it or not broken off and then there was one nail down in here that's about two inches deep what we'll do here is we're just going to cut a board off of here trim the sapwood on this leave that there whatever it is we'll just leave the hole there it doesn't matter and we can make boards out of either side of this thing all right let's go ahead and get back into saw on this one i'm ready to see some nice uh, some nice clear black walnut out of this All right, guys, we finally decided which side of the log we're going into. This side looks like it'll give us the best boards out of all of them. But hey, as we cut, we make decisions, right? But take a look at this, guys. Nice. Yeah, we'll be trimming some sapwood off of the edges. Just to get us down to all dark wood. That's some really pretty black walnut. We're not going to be throwing a whole lot of water around today. We'll try to get some water pops. But... It's cold out. <laughs> it's not winter winter yet, but it's cold out. There's some beautiful stuff here, guys. Definitely. I think this is our first sign of uh, when we're going to see a branch not popping out here, but the rest of it's all clear. I like this down here, though, too. I mean, look at the way the grain swirls throughout here. This is some nice looking stuff. All right, guys, I'm not waiting any longer. Let's get back to cutting. And guess who's cutting today? You already saw her. She's on it. Give her a hand. <laughs> You're giving yourself a hand. Good one. This is the first board. We're not going to trim this. Yes, we have a tiny bit of sapwood here, a little bit up here, but take a look at this. We are looking for clear, straight grain, guys. We're not looking for a whole lot of figure. This is the closest thing to figure we got right here is this one knot that's probably, after this cut, you're going to actually see the branch. So, but there is a ton of really nice, clear black walnut here. 
These are 19 inches wide. 19 inches wide. And this, this is nice. <laughs> nice stuff. A tiny bit of sapwood. But, uh, man, the board footage coming out as long is going to be great. Let's get this one off and get to the next cut. All right, guys, we did want to get you a shot of this. That's 38 inch wide book match set right there. Check it out. Some beautiful grain coming out of this log. Yeah, those are our two knots, or our one knot. We've been, uh, we finally reached one. But two boards, it's about, let's throw a throw tape maker on here real quick. 38 and a half, so clean cut that, 38 inches wide. Nice looking stuff, guys. Okay, what we did was we cut all the way down to the pith on this side. We're gonna go ahead and turn it up and start pulling boards, a little bit narrower boards, probably. Let's get a, an idea here. About 12 inches wide. <laughs> uh, we do have to double check for some metal and uh, just yep. keep checking the log. We knew this side was cleared down to about six or eight inches. The metal detector said it was, and it was. So let's keep pulling this apart, getting some more boards off of here and uh, get the rest of this milled up. All right, guys, one water pop today. I think this stuff is looking good. This is our, I think this is our third clear face. We're gonna take probably two to three boards off of here. And then we're, I know the quality is gonna drop. We're gonna be close to the center. We're gonna start picking up some knots. You always turn your log to the clean face for your best quality lumber. Wow, check this grain out down here, guys. This is cool. This is actually the edge of that crotch. It's just actually becoming crotch rain. If we were slabbing, we'd be looking for this because we know the crotch rain's on its way. And look at this, you can see where the oxygen hit this wood already, where it has oxidized the green and the browns. And this is the way the whole thing will look once it's, uh, once it's completely dried. Yeah, there was something in here. I didn't pull anything out of here. These are old holes from something. And uh, I got, <laughs> I'll take a picture of all the metal we pulled out of this log. All right, guys, one more book match set. These are 12 inch wide boards. It's looking nice. And this one. Start picking up the clamp and everything.
Okay, guys, remember when I said these two holes uh, never had anything in them? Somebody must have pulled it out of the tree at some point in time. Nah, they didn't. The nails rotted off. Holding. Ta-da. That's a nice old ceramic insulator. They've got about a quarter inch into it. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do, trim the sander log off and uh, continue on. We are not going to waste this black walnut at uh -uh. all. No. The black walnut saga continues. <laughs> As part of the family of Woodmiser owners here at the Iron Oak Sawmill, we'd like to present you with your trophy. <laughs> your Is this your first ceramic insulator, Debbie? Yes. <laughs> we yes, managed it managed to get it out of the log, guys. It's a small one. It is a small one. That's, usually we get them great big, big honking ones. ones yes. that, but we do. I, I think there might actually be a second one in here, too. But... I told her she doesn't get it as a trophy because she didn't hit it. And let's keep it that way. So what we're going to do is just finish this cut off here and uh, continue on. All right. Yes, triumphant return to the mill. Let's see what else we can find in this mill. My vote for favorite grain on this one, on this log, is this. These outer boards, you can tell it's an outer board, it's got a little sapwood on it. But these outer boards got some really cool marbling in the grain here, I mean, especially right in here. But I'd vote that as my favorite board off of here, I believe. Well guys, there you have it. A lot of beautiful black walnut. And you saw how wide they were, 19, what was it, 19 wide, 19 and a half wide, something like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. And uh, we've got some others to put on here from other logs. And we've still got those logs to go that are at the mill. And we got a lot of good black, wa black walnut lumber coming up. Got a little bit of iron staining in this, of course you guys saw from the metal. But you can work around that and uh, make some real nice stuff out of this. But as usual, and once again, the black walnut curse has hit us. What do you expect? black walnut log yard or yard logs but you can see let me bring this up real close here i'll get a picture of this a separate picture of this stuff but we've got like six or eight pieces of metal in there and then we've got deb's little trophy piece right here her uh ceramic insulator i never so, saw one that small yeah i'm not sure what that's from but uh it definitely stopped the blade <laughs> Hey 
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I know we had a blast with that one. A little bit of a challenge again with the metal, but we got it done and we got some beautiful black walnut coming out of this. Um, I, I, I wanna separate out one of our viewers that it, it, he watches all the time, comments occasionally. And when he comments, it's a long comment. Questions in it, comments in it. It's really nice to read it. Morgan Adair up in Alaska. Hopefully I'm getting your last name pronounced correctly. Morgan Adair. Uh, always talks about his time on the, on the mill when he was younger and uh, he always offers a little bit of advice and uh, always some good comments. So Morgan, thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. Glad you're coming back every week and uh, we really appreciate your support. But uh, you ready? We're done wrapping this one up. Yeah, we got a mill job coming up guys tomorrow. So we're, we've got the mill packed up, hooked up to the Toyota and we are ready to go again. Um, ash logs, of course, everybody's got <laughs> ash logs, but and let's not forget the uh, the Joe Main double hard 739 seven degree turbo blades on the LT35 did excellent. Thank you, Joe, for getting those blades to us. They're doing real well. And that's our go-to blade, guys. If you want to know what we're using, that's what we're using 99.9% .9 of the time. But uh, we'll put Joe's contact information down in the description. Uh, if you need blades for your email, go ahead and contact Joe. And of course, we use them all the time, but we seldom talk about them. Those log right can hooks. Awesome job. Demonstrated that mega hook. That's a lot of work, guys, but it's better. You cannot move logs like that without them for the most part. And uh, they did great. So we look forward to using those every time I come out on the mill because they make life easier for us. Do you have any other questions about what we're doing here at the mill? Any of the tools we're using? This black walnut, the mill, the splitter, whatever it is, please put it down in the comments section. Glad to help you out. And as always, thanks everybody for stopping out, and we'll see you at our next time. And take care.